traditionally in the life of the church, we celebrate on, uh, usually on the Sunday after Christmas, as close as possible to January 6th, the epiphany, the striking appearance of God with us, Emmanuel. And we tell the story of the Magi, the wise and wealthy Magi who come from the East to pay homage, to give themselves and what they have to the newborn King of the Jews. It's a good backdrop to the scripture we have for this morning, a good backdrop to the commitment that we make each and every day, but we celebrate together each and every year when we recommit ourselves uh, to God and, and to following Christ. Just as those uh, magi from the East sought out and paid homage with their lives and with their resources to the newborn king of the Jews. So we do too. We search out Christ and we kneel before him and give ourselves to him. And our scripture uh, tells us what that looks like when it happens. It's from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower, he says. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Well, it's hard to find a branch this time of the year to use as a good illustration. So, uh, I picked something that uh, we see a lot of this time of the year. Christmas lights. Right. And sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, when we try to figure out what exactly it means to abide. I am the vine and you are the branches, Jesus says. My father is the vine grower. And we can see on this uh, Christmas vine, we see individual lights bearing fruit. God is the source of life and light, we tap into that source and we shine. If we don't tap into that source, we don't shine. And God has two choices of what to do with us. The one choice is to throw us away. But the other choice is to twist and turn until we're connected. Anyone ever feel twisted and turned? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nobody said it would be easy. Jesus used the imagery of a vine and branches and pruning. Famous illustration for an agricultural community. It really resonated. With us, it would resonate just as well, but this also gives us good insight that the source of life is the electricity and the vine. We are the lights that shine from God's power. How do we abide in this? How do we tap into this? How do we remain in this? It's by making a commitment, by committing ourselves and our lives our will and our plan, our priorities, our actions, firmly connected with God. 
drawn from God's power, drawn from God's promise, not from our own. Seeking to stay connected each and every day, in each and every way. We know what happens when we pull the fruit or we pull the branches off. They will wither and they'll die. Because there is no source of life except the source that is God. And our calling, God's plan, and all of God's encouragement is for us to stay planted and to grow. As we come to a place to commit for this 2018 year, to grow in faith, to serve in hope, to reach out with love and to have our generosity match our gratitude, we need to remain connected to the power and presence of God in all things. There are two ways Christians tend to go about that. One is the hard, difficult work of letting the vine grower prune and prune and prune, letting the twists and the turns to make us fit and connect let them rule our lives and let us learn and grow from them. The other way, which is quicker and easier, but doesn't get us nearly so far, is fake it. Right? This is always going to be green, no matter how many pieces you cut it into. It's always going to be green. The flower is always going to bloom, and looking at it from far away, you're never going to tell whether it's real or whether it's not. But there's no life in this. Just like there's no life in just the surface commitment. In just going through the motions and making it look like we have a connection with God. There's no life there. The only life is a life that wells up from the source of life, which is Christ, the vine. It says we move to make our commitment in the Wesleyan tradition this morning and celebrate communion and receive new members, each one of us should be deeply reflecting on how God is willing and wanting to work in our lives. How God is twisting us and turning us and pruning us for bearing much fruit and shining much light in 2018 and beyond. You know, the Methodist movement was never meant to be a church. It was always meant to be a committed and faithful people. They were called Methodists because their daily actions reflected their faith in Christ. And they were very successful. They were very holy people, committed to their faith and reaching out with good works. That's who we are, and that's what we commit to as followers of Christ. In a moment, we'll have a chance to make our unison confession. You'll find it. It's an insert in the bulletin today. A covenant prayer of confession in just a moment. I'm going to start with a few words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have been admitted into the new covenant which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his blood that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we affirm our baptismal covenant and when we gather at the Lord's table. Today, we meet, as the generations before us have met, to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. And together, let's pray this covenant prayer of confession. O righteous God, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Forgive my unfaithfulness in not having done your will. For you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. 
I here from the bottom of my heart renounce all of my idols, covenanting with you that no known sin shall be allowed in my life. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for my portion. Jesus, I accept you as the only new and living way and sincerely join myself in a covenant with you. With all my power, I accept you as my Lord and head. I renounce my own worthiness and vow that you are the Lord of my righteousness. I renounce my own wisdom and take you for my only guide. I renounce my own will and take your will as my law. I do here covenant with you, O Christ, to take my lot with you as it may fall. Amen. <clears throat> Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants and give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ will be the savior of none but his servants. He is the source of all salvation for those who obey. Christ will, not, will have no servants except by consent. Christ will not accept anything except full consent to all that he requires. He will be all in all, or he will be nothing. Confirm this by holy covenant, to make this covenant a reality in our lives, and listen to these admonitions. First, set apart some time more than once to be spent alone before the Lord in seeking earnestly God's special assistance and gracious acceptance of you. Second, be serious in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, claim God's covenant. Rely upon God's promise of giving grace and strength so we can keep our promises. Trust not our own strength and power. And last, be prepared to renew this covenant with the Lord. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Open your hearts to the Lord as we pray the covenant prayer in the Wesley tradition. I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low by you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, and the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. I encourage everyone, as Methodists have done for generations past, is don't throw this covenant sheet away. I've actually had people sign it and keep it or put it in a prominent place in your home to remember it throughout the year. <clears throat>